Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, I hope you're keeping well. Back to there then with another pickup video. And this one is full of 8-bit goodness. Um, yeah, I've got a few Spectrum games. I think about 6. 6 Amstrad titles. We'll make that 9. And 6 Commodore 64 titles. So as you know, I'm after a complete ocean set across all the formats. So as long as I've got a particular title, doesn't matter what system it's on, I'm a happy chap. So I don't want flipping 5 Robocops again, I've been there before. Um, so yeah, all my Commodore 64 pickups this month are all Ocean games, and they're all unique to the Commodore 64. A couple of them are actually um, portovers for, by Ocean of Vortex games, games that you'd be familiar with on uh, Sinclair Spectrum. So the first game I'm going to show you for the Commodore 64 is a game called Roll Roller Rollerball. Couldn't get out of my fucking mouth then. Um, game that was released in 1983. It's flipping horrible. This is there's some footage of this on YouTube. Check it out, but it is flipping diabolical. It's amazing they actually published that. To be honest, it's got to be one of my worst ocean games yet. And they made quite a few crap ones, to be honest. Next one I've got to show you then is a Vortex. Uh, well, it's been licensed from Vortex and kind of re-released on the uh, Commodore 64 Tornado Low Level. To be honest, it looks like the weaker of the three versions, which is a shame. Or is it? Being an old Spectrum man. But yeah, it's, it's alright, it's quite jerky graphically, um, resembles obviously the Amstrad and Spectrum versions, but it's not, not the same, not as good. I didn't realise Ocean actually, well, developed those games from Vortex for the Commodore 64. Next up is Android 2, another one of those Vortex games. I don't remember seeing much footage on YouTube for this one to be honest, because I don't have a Commodore 64, I can't try these games out. But I might have a Commodore 64 in a way, who knows. But yeah, Android 2, another one released in, what, 1983. So I was quite interested as well. Ocean Software not only released games specifically for the Commodore 64, but they've done the same for the Commodore 16, Vic 20, and a flipping Auric. I didn't even know what Auric was until the other day, and I checked one out on YouTube. I've heard of it, but I've never seen one. But it's actually a game Ocean released for Auric. They were usually quite supportive of old systems, weren't they, back in the day? Games for GX4000, the Commodore 64 GS, I don't know, Atari Jaguar, they were very supportive. Um, next up on the list is High Noon, which is actually better than the games I've shown you so far. It's not a bad little game, this, from what I've seen of it. And there is one game on the bottom of this box here that I'm still after as an ocean game, and that is Stunt Bike. Which again, might only cost a quid or two. Most of these games only cost like a couple of quid anyway. Um, we tend to get more clamshells on the Commodore 64 than you did on the Spectrum. Don't know why that is. Well, last but not least on the Commodore 64 is a game I've never really heard of before. And I couldn't find any footage of this at all on YouTube. It's called Johnny and the Jimpies. That's quite a cool little name. Got quite a cool bit of artwork on the front of it. But because I can't find any footage of it on YouTube, I haven't got a flipping clue what it's all about. The game came out in 1984. Specifically for the Commodore 64. So yeah, it's amazing how many games Ocean released. Right from their very early Spectrum Games days. Right through to the flipping Nintendo 64. I mean, believe it or not, there's games like Rocky and Pocky they published, or Rocky and Pocky 2, get that right. They published that in Europe, so that's one I've got to go for. I don't even flipping collect collect games for the Super Nintendo. There's also um, Choplifter 3 they released, um, a Turrican game on the Super Nintendo. It's flipping loads. Um, next up on my list then are Spectrum titles. Let me just grab them a second. First up is another Ocean game, one of two I've picked up on the uh, ZX Spectrum. And that's Adidas Championship Football. This game only got released on the 8-bit systems for some particular reason. And as you can see, it's very similar to Kickoff 2. Now, I'm wondering if they released this game, or didn't release this game on the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga, because it didn't receive great reviews in comparison to Kickoff 2. Now, maybe Ocean probably learnt their lessons from old, and if the games didn't get particularly well received, they didn't release them. But I know they pulled games games from sale in the past as well, like International Open Golf. So this game should have come with a limited edition, World in Motion by New Order. Cassette. I didn't unfortunately get it. Yeah, I really love that tune. It just takes me straight back to that World Cup and to the kickoff two days. Um, it was a shame it's not in there, but I'll keep an eye. That was about five, I think that was. It's not too bad. It's quite an obscure game. One of my favourite arcade games of old, um, and in fact one of my favourite arcade conversions on the Spectrum, is Pac-Land, which brings all the uh, arcade fun into the home. Unfortunately, it's all in monochrome, 
So yeah, it's a very good game, very addictive game, and can can be quite flipping hard at times. But I used to play that a hell of a lot of my good mates when I was a lot younger. Another really good arcade conversion. Again, I've only ever seen this game on the 8-bit computers. I've never seen it on any other console. That's Wonder Boy. Which plays really well on a Spectrum. Again in monochrome, unfortunately. But, yeah, very good. I, I didn't realise this game didn't come out in the Sega Mega Drive. Because I've played Wonder Boy games in the past. But they didn't, they didn't resemble that or the arcade. So I'm not quite sure what the crack is with that. Um, the final Ocean game I've got to show you from the uh, Sinclair Spectrum is a TV... Well, TV license. Um, back in that lovely era of 1986 when most TV licenses released by Ocean were absolutely diabolical. This is Miami Vice. Again, I remember playing it years ago on a, on a pirated cassette and it was rubbish. Top-down driving, but the controls were so poor. You used to always like, oversteer or understeer. You never flipping drove in a straight line. But yeah, this one set me back about 13 quid. Um, so I've now got the trilogy that I was after, especially like the TV licenses, like Street Hawk, uh, Knight Rider, and now this. Now the last game has got a bit of an interesting backstory to it, because it's a game I remember playing back in the day, uh, before I even got a Spectrum. I always, well, I always thought it was called this, and then when I put this name into eBay to find it, it never come up. So this is called Splitting Images. So apparently Central Television didn't like the fact that Domark used that name. Um, obviously based on their program. Um, and then they pulled it from sale, then reissued the game as Split Personalities. And that's the game that, well I don't remember the game being called Split Personalities, so that's probably why I can never find it. So I'm really pleased to have the original release of it. It's a fantastic one of those Chinese puzzle games, I don't know if you can see it very well, but you have to move all the pieces around to make an image. And there's a few little puzzly bits thrown in for good measure just to make the game even more flipping harder, like exploding bombs. So very good game, very chuffed to have it because that's very nostalgic and probably one of my top 20 Spectrum games of all time. That's it for the Spectrum, that's it for the Commodore. Next up is my Amstrad Disc Games. Now I've recently received a bundle of Amstrad Disc Games in the post from France. So some of these games have got French stickers on them, which is no bad thing. Uh, first up then like that is a game called Rainbow Islands. So I have this on flipping loads of formats. So like I was saying earlier, Robocop and five flipping formats. I've got this on the Spectrum STN Amiga. So I probably won't keep them all, to be honest. But again, another really good conversion by Ocean. One of one of my favourite arcade games. It's great fun. Um, comes with its baggy, I think, and disc. And, and what's really nice is that whole bundle works. So chuff the bits to have it. Another game used to have back in the day, again on the Spectrum, and again I've got it on flipping four machines, is Power Drift. I know it's not an ocean game, but still. How many flipping versions of one game does one man want? Um, it looks like the Spectrum version, but coloured in, so that well, it actually looks better than the Spectrum version then, doesn't it? But it plays slightly slower, so that's the only drawback against it versus, versus the Spectrum version, but it does look better, to be honest. Um, next up then is another game which has got a bit of a backstory to it I suppose, Double Dragon. Now did you know there's two versions of Double Dragon on the Amstrad? So the first version was pretty much like the Spectrum version, I think it was pretty much a straight port. It was redone some years later. I don't know if that was some years later, it might have been a year later or something, but I was always informed that when you saw the Melbourne House logo there, if it said Melbourne House or Virgin Mastertronic or whatever, then it would be the better version, but this definitely is the better version, so I don't know if Flippin told me that, but they're talking out their fucking ass. But that's that one. Uh, next up is a compilation of some of the best games ever released on the Amstrad. Now look at them. Another French compilation, but bloody hell. Renegade, Beach Volley, Flying Shark, Bubble Bubble, Weckland Mars, Wonder Boy Match Day 2. What an amazing collection of games. What was great about these discs is the fact that they fit on just two of them. So yeah, really good compilation, and it all works, so that's fantastic. Right, the next game I've got to show you for the Amstrad is uh, one of those nice slim covered games. So I've now got about 15 of them. And the game is called Legend of Cage by Imagine Software. So a game I don't have as part of the Imagine Ocean collection, which I now have on the Amstrad. I actually do love these, these style cases. Um, there we go, so I've got a well used the disc as you can see so luckily it still works which is fantastic so really pleased to have that 
Um, two more left to show you for the Amstrad then. The first one is a game which was pointed out to me by uh, our good friend, Ash81 before you. He told me all about this being on eBay, so I couldn't resist. This one was about 30 quid. Legend of Cage, believe it or not, was about 50 quid, which is crazy really. This is Game Over 1 and 2 in one box. It was published by Dynamic, who actually made the original game in the first place. Obviously it has some controversial artwork in the first game, which I've touched upon. So there is that first game. And there's a second game. So yeah, I really, really do like the artwork for this game. Massive wall poster. I was just thinking, these guys, let me remind you a little bit of uh, the power suits in like the Fallout series. Got power armor on, for God's sake. But yeah, awesome. And comes in its, its little disc. So chuffed to bits for that one. So thank you very much, Ash. I did win it, mate, if you were wondering. But yeah, lovely condition as well. So chuffed to have that. And the final game I got in that big bundle of Amstrad disc games is a game called Slice by Secret Agent. A very difficult game to track down. Get the Amstrad disc version. I don't know why this game is particularly hard to get, to be honest, because it came out, what, in 1990? I don't know why the Amstrad version is quite difficult to obtain. But a very, very good conversion. I think it's, I've picked up some really good Amstrad conversions here. That's definitely better than the Spectrum version. Looks and plays really, really well. But that's it. I think that is it. Like I said, a bit of an opportunist when it comes to Amstrad games. I think that bundle cost me about 90 quid, but I'll be shifting about 10 of those games on because I don't want... Well, I only want those, to be honest, in the collection. Um, Commodore 64, I keep collecting some games for it, especially the Ocean stuff. I'm missing Comic Bakery, which looks really good. And I'm missing that bike game. Uh, Stunt Bike, which looks alright, I suppose. But again, with the Commodore 65, I have no desire to collect anything for it. Which is a shame, really. I'm sure there's some really good games out there, which I've never played before. Um, that's it. That's it for these pickups. So the next video I'll show you will probably be my FM Towns Marty collection. I definitely want to do another pickup video soon because I've got a lot more 16 bit, um, some PC games, a collector's edition or two to show you. So I'll see you again real soon. Thank you very much for subscribing. All the best. Bye for now.